Mom doesn't need your permission to meet another man, my daughter Abby said, her voice dripping with contempt. Sarah, my wife of 19 years, had fallen into the arms of Robert Lindstrom, her colleague. I'm going out, Liam, on a date. Don't wait up for me. My world crumbled as she pursued her desires without remorse. In the aftermath, I sought retribution, a path fraught with pain and anger. This is my story of vengeance and heartbreak. Enjoy watching it. Liam Robertson leaned back in his seat, trying to find a comfortable position to sleep in. The space between the seats was too tight for his long legs. At 6 2 inches and 230 pounds, it felt like he was squeezed into a space meant for someone much smaller. He had been on this flight for five hours with another four to go. If he had known he'd have to put up with this, he might have thought twice about taking the job. Maybe he would have taken a train or something else. Still, the job meant he could escape his problems and pain for maybe 10 months, possibly up to 14 months. Being far away from home seemed like a big plus. The problems he left behind could sort themselves out while he was gone. His lawyer could handle it. That's why he paid her. That's why he trusted her. He gave up trying to find a good position and leaned against the airplane window, closing his eyes. He needed some sleep, even though he knew what memories would come back when he tried. The day his happy life fell apart. Liam had come home from work later than usual that terrible day. It was just one of those days when nothing went right. Each moment brought new problems. Every thought seemed bitter. His meetings, his briefings, all were flat when they should have gone great. He was supposed to be the rising star, the guy moving up quickly. He was golden, right? But that day at work humbled him. It humbled him so much that the CEO called him to a late meeting and offered him a job Liam didn't want. He knew he had to either take it or find a new job. Luckily, he had a few days to think about it. He came home in a bad mood, ready to tell his wife, Sarah, what was going on with his career. Things had been tense with Sarah for weeks since that stupid party, and now he had to drop this on her? She was going to be furious. Honestly, Liam didn't understand what had been going on at home since that party. He was confused and mad. Mad at Sarah. It was all her fault, not his. Everything that happened at that party was her doing, not his. Liam wasn't usually jealous, but what Sarah did with Robert Lindstrom at the party humiliated and angered him. Fun was fun, especially with some drinks, but what his wife and that guy did, right in front of everyone, was too much. Sarah spent the entire party with Lindstrom, ignoring Liam. At first, she gently told Liam to talk to other people, but then she got irritated and finally rude as the night went on. Her behavior went from friendly to flirty to inappropriate the longer she spent with Lindstrom. She got drunk, she said, with Lindstrom, and let him take whatever liberties he wanted, with everyone watching, including her husband. Liam didn't even know who Lindstrom was. He had never heard of him before. Liam had had enough when he came out of the bathroom to find Lindstrom kissing his wife full on the mouth, her shirt open. Liam dragged his wife out of the party and took her home. He didn't punch Lindstrom, though he wanted to. He just wanted to get Sarah out of there. Sarah didn't seem drunk on the way home. She was coldly angry at being embarrassed by her husband's reaction. Their house had been icy for the past three weeks. She refused to admit she had done anything wrong, calling Liam foolish, jealous, and immature during their arguments. It had been 19 years of marriage, a marriage Liam thought was good and loving. Then out of the blue, she acted like this at a party and blamed him for it. Liam's feelings and humiliation didn't matter to her, then or now. He had no idea why she acted that way or why she blamed him. Nothing made sense to him. He was tired of the nonsense. Coming home that terrible day, he found her dressed for a night out, a big smile on her face, ready to leave. Sarah, where are you going? We need to talk. Something happened. I'm going out, Liam, on a date. Don't wait up for me. What are you talking about? What date? Sarah's smile vanished, replaced by her cold, angry face. I have decided I am not happy with my life as it is, with you. I'm going to try something different to make my life better. It starts tonight, with this date. Sarah, a date with who? Why are you acting like this? You've treated me horribly for three weeks and now you're going on a date? What is going on with you? She frowned. I have been asked out by a male friend. We are going to dinner and dancing. I am doing this for myself, Liam. 
It's what I want to do, and I don't need your permission or approval. Nor do I feel the need to explain it to you. I didn't have the time or energy to make you dinner, but you can take care of yourself. Order in, go out, it doesn't matter. Wait, is this a joke? I've had the worst day, Sarah. This isn't funny. Stop right there, Liam. This is not a joke. I'm going out on a date with Robert Lindstrom. He asked, and I said yes. What the? You're going on a date with that jerk you were flirting with at the party? That jerk? You're leaving me and our marriage for him? Sarah frowned again. It doesn't matter what you think of him, Liam. What matters is what I think of him. I like him enough to want to spend time with him. It has nothing to do with our marriage, so stop that nonsense right now. You are my husband and you will stay my husband. I'm just going to spend some time with a friend. Are you serious? I have no say in this? Is that what you're telling me, Sarah? Am I that unimportant to you? You think you can just tell me this out of the blue? Really? I'm just supposed to accept this decision without saying anything? Well, guess what? I'm done with your nonsense. Three weeks of tantrums, of you blaming me for your behavior. Now you want to date other men? No way. I don't know what you think you're doing, but I've had enough. It takes two to make a marriage, Sarah. When one walks away, the marriage ends. You go out that door to be with him or anyone else, and we're finished. Stop being ridiculous. You're acting like a child. I'm leaving. Don't wait up for me. With that, Sarah went out the door, slamming it behind her. Liam stood there, stunned, as he listened to her car leave the driveway. His wife walked out the door to be with another man. His wife! How did this happen? Where did this behavior come from? Liam didn't know how long he stood there, but it was getting dark outside. Almost without thinking, he went to the basement and got all their suitcases. He took them upstairs to the bedroom. Once inside, he had another shock. Their bed was a mess, and there were visible stains on the dark sheets. He took out his phone and snapped several pictures of what he was seeing. Any doubt about the state of his marriage was now gone. Liam ripped the sheets from the bed and threw them against the wall. One by one, he filled the suitcases. When they were full, he looked for other bags to fill with his clothes and belongings. Once he had everything out of the closet and drawers, he began moving everything downstairs. He made a stop in his office and opened the safe. He took his passport, social security card, and half of the certificates of deposit. Then he took out his handgun, placing it on the desk along with two boxes of ammunition and four spare magazines. He left the safe wide open. Liam then sat at his desk, staring at his shaking hands. It was probably another hour before he made some phone calls. Mr. Abernathy? I'm sorry to be calling this late. It's Liam. Is your job offer still available? Oh, yes, it is, Liam. Are you accepting it? I am, sir. I'm in the middle of packing now. I would have waited until morning, but I'll be busy the next couple of days getting ready to leave. There are legal and banking issues to take care of. I understand, Liam. Of course, take care of what you need to. I'm sorry for the short notice. I am. Have you seen your wife? This won't be a burden on your marriage? No, sir, it won't be a problem. I just need to get things settled before I leave. It's Saturday? The day I leave? Yes, Liam. Early Saturday morning. You'll have four days of training in Georgia, and then you'll be on your way. Tell me, have you decided to take a firearm? You are allowed to. Yes, sir. I'll be bringing a pistol. I need to give the details to your assistant. Yes, Liam. As much information as you can. All right, sir. You need me in the office this week? Yes, Liam. Friday afternoon at 1 o'clock for your briefing. You can plan on being there until... probably 8 o'clock. Is that doable for you? Yes, sir. That gives me plenty of time to wrap things up here. Liam? Your wife? Are you sure this won't cause a problem for your marriage? It won't, sir. Trust me on that. Excellent. Liam, thank you. This job is very important to us as a company. Extremely important. I honestly don't know who I would trust more than you to get it done. Thank you. It's my pleasure, Mr. Abernathy. I'm looking forward to this job. It's probably going to be the most challenging one I've ever taken. Good night, sir. I'll see you on Friday. Liam's next call was to his old college friend, Lillian Prescott, who was also his longtime family attorney. Hey, Lillian, it's Liam. Am I disturbing you? Do you have a few minutes? Liam? What's wrong? Your voice? What's going on? I'm, uh, I'm leaving Sarah. Divorce. I won't be here for most of it, so I need someone I trust to handle my side for me. Can you help? I know you and Sarah are friends, but Lillian, I really need your help. Please? 
God, Liam, of course I'll help you, whatever you need. When can you come to my office? Tomorrow? I have to go to the bank when it opens and I'll be there for maybe two hours? Any time after ten? Let's meet for lunch at eleven. How about Mario's? We can talk and then go to my office. Does that work for you? Yes, thank you. I will see you tomorrow. Thanks, Lillian. Tomorrow, Liam. Don't do anything silly before then, all right? I won't. See you tomorrow. Good night. The next call was going to be tough. He had to tell his daughter what was going on. Abby was only 18, but already a junior at Berkeley. She had always been a top student, skipped two grades in high school, and was there on a full scholarship for a master's program. He knew the news would hit her hard. Hey, honey, it's your dad. I've been expecting your call, dad. I thought I would have heard from you sooner. Oh, why is that? I know, dad, she said from 3,000 miles away. I know what mom is doing tonight. I know why she is doing it. You do? How could you know that? She told me. We've been talking about this for several months. Talking about what? You've known for months? Dad, look, she has the right... What right would that be, Abby? The right to throw away her marriage? Is that what you mean? Dad, you're overreacting. Stop being so dramatic. It's not like the old days. Mom doesn't have to answer to you for what she wants to do in her life. She doesn't need your permission to see other people, Dad. She doesn't even have to tell you she's doing it. Her seeing someone else isn't about being married, not in today's world. Women today, women of all ages, can explore their lives. Being married doesn't change that. Nowadays, marriage is just about sharing resources. It's just an economic plan. Thinking two people should commit their whole lives to each other is crazy. It's immature. Wait a minute. Am I getting a lecture from a kid who has never had a serious relationship? Is that what's happening here? Yes, Dad, it is. Get over it. Marriage is old-fashioned. It's not needed outside of money matters. No woman should feel like she is owned by a man. Where are you learning this, Abby? At your school? Is this what they teach there? No, Dad, not really. I had these ideas long before I came here. They just grew stronger at this campus. Look, I love you, Dad. But you need to back off. What you did to Mom at that party was bad enough. Mom had the right to do what she did and you shouldn't have embarrassed her like that. Being with that guy was her choice, not yours. You crossed a line when you interfered. Leave mom alone. She made a choice and has the right to do so without you bothering her. Bothering her? Are you on something, Abby? Do you understand what you are saying? Trying to understand our lives is bothering her? What about my choices? Are you saying you think mom has all the say in our marriage? Do you think I have no say in our marriage? No, Dad. You don't. Yours is the old way of thinking. Those days are over. Look, I'm on Mom's side. Completely. She told me everything. She asked what I thought about what she did before and what she is doing now. I told her I approved. Okay? I am cheering her on. Accept it and move on, Dad. Don't make a fuss. Mom can have whatever fun she wants. All you are doing is making her angry and keeping her angry. This choice of hers doesn't have to affect you. It doesn't. Just live your own life and stay out of hers. It's that simple. Well, it seems you have chosen a side. Nice to know how little I matter to the women in my life. Liam hung up and turned off his phone. What the heck, where he had felt sadness about losing his wife, now he felt anger. He went online and removed Sarah from his credit cards. She had her own. She could use that one. He changed his login info while he was at it. He paid his balances off using their joint savings account. After that, he took half of the remaining savings and moved it into his account, changing his login username and password. He did the same with their checking account, moving half to his account. He then went to his email and changed his username and password there, too. The house was almost paid off, so he didn't worry about that. She couldn't sell it or take out loans without his signature. She could finish paying for it until the divorce. Their cars were all paid for. No issue there. He shut his laptop collected all the cables he needed for it, his tablet and phone, and packed them up. The last things he took from the office were all their financial and tax records. He would need them. It took an hour for him to pack his vehicle so he could still see out the windows. Then he left. He closed the front door but didn't lock it. It wasn't his home anymore, so he didn't care. There was nothing left in there that he cared about. Liam didn't look for a hotel in town. 
He drove 40 minutes away and found a national hotel just off the highway. Liam got a room and took all his stuff inside. He would be there for four days, so no point leaving things in the car. He didn't sleep, though. Both Sarah's and Abby's words echoed in his head. At five in the morning, he got dressed and left his room carrying his briefcase. Liam drove back home just to check what he suspected. He arrived at 6.10 a.m. Sarah's car wasn't in the driveway or the garage. The front door was unlocked and the lights were on. Liam believed that when people make choices, they should live with them. Sarah and Abby made choices that were selfish and hurtful. They knew they were causing a lot of pain to him and their family and they didn't care. Liam had his own choices to make now. There was no turning back, no matter how hard or final it felt. He went inside, took off his wedding ring, and left it on the counter by the coffee pot. Then he left for good. Liam went to the bank as soon as it opened. He confirmed the money transfer, closed his account, and took a cashier's check with him. He also cashed his CDs at a big loss. There was no use keeping them now. Next, Liam went to another bank and opened a new account, using Lillian's office address and phone number. He then went to a car dealership and sold his car, again at a big loss. He got a rental car for the rest of the week and deposited the check from the car sale into his new bank account. He went to Mario's restaurant. Lillian was there waiting for him. He quickly told her what had happened at the party, what had gone on over the past three weeks, and what happened last night. Lillian's anger was clear. They ate a quick lunch, but Liam didn't have an appetite. They went to Lillian's office, where he gave her a large check and some documents to start the process. So, you think Abby is the one making Sarah do this? Lillian asked. Honestly, it seems like it's all Abby's idea. She said she's been talking to Sarah about it for months. I can't believe it. My daughter and my wife doing this to me? Why? I don't understand. Sarah didn't give you any clues or say anything before the party? No, nothing. She was fine until we got to the party. We were laughing and joking in the car on the way, singing songs even. But once we entered the house, she walked away from me and stayed away. Always with this Lindstrom guy. I don't even know if she knew him before. For the last three weeks, Sarah has been mean to me. Every talk turned into a shouting match. Then last night, you should have seen her face as she was leaving, Lillian. I, that's okay, Liam. I'm here for you. What do you need me to do? Thank you, Lillian. I need a divorce. No doubt about it. I went by the house this morning at 6.10. She wasn't home and hadn't been. So yes, divorce and adultery if we can prove it. Do you know someone who can get the proof? I do, but it will cost. I don't care. I want to hurt her, Lillian, legally. She was with some guy in my bed yesterday. Probably Lindstrom, but I don't know. How do you know she did that? Liam turned on his phone. He had missed calls from Abby and three texts from Sarah. He ignored them and sent the pictures of their bed to Lillian. Lillian frowned at the photos. What else do you need from me? Liam asked. I need a new will. I'm cutting Sarah and Abby out of my life. It has to be ironclad. And I want to give you power of attorney to act for me in all ways. You're the only person I trust, Lillian. Can you do that? I can, she said softly. Liam, if she did this at your home yesterday, she's probably been doing it for a while. Women don't bring men home unless they're comfortable with them. Liam shrugged. Wire the house for audio and video. Can that be done? Yes, my guy can do it. We need a key and any alarm codes. Liam handed her his house key. Have you checked Sarah's texts? No, I haven't. Do that. The first text came in at 10 p.m. last night. Sarah, go to bed, Liam. I won't be home tonight. Oh, you might want to change the sheets or not. Your choice. The next text came at 4.30 a.m. this morning. Sarah, I decided to spend the rest of the week with Robert. Don't call me. I want this. Your interference isn't appreciated. The final text came just 30 minutes earlier. Sarah, we'll talk when I get home Sunday if I'm not too tired. You should move into the guest room. I don't want to share the master bedroom with you. That room is for any guests I bring home. Son of a bitch, Liam yelled. What is it, Liam? He forwarded the texts to her. Looks like you have the rest of the week to get your guy into the house. I should probably be with you just in case one of the neighbors sees you. We can do it this evening if you like. It won't take long. I'll call him now. Are you going to answer any of those texts? No, there's no point. What about your voicemails? Are they from Abby? Liam shrugged. 
No voicemails, just missed call notices from Abby. Your property, Liam? Did you sell your car this morning? Yes, I did. Liam sighed deeply. I thought about letting Sarah have the house, let her pay it off and live there. But now? Forget it. She can either buy me out or we sell it. I don't care. I'm not giving her anything. If I can, I want to take from her. As much as I can. I can't promise anything, Liam. If we get enough proof for an adultery case, the court will favor you when dividing things. There's also this guy, Lindstrom. If we find him, we can sue him for breaking up your marriage. If he works with her, we can even go after their company. I'll handle all of this while you're away. But Liam, are you sure you really want to hurt them? I need to know this isn't just anger talking. It's not. You've known me for years, Lillian. You know I mean it. Do it. Lillian looked at her old friend closely. No, this wasn't just short-term anger. He was set on this. All right then, Liam. I'll have everything ready for you to sign tomorrow morning. It'll be about a week before she gets served, though. We need time to gather video and audio proof. That's fine. I won't be here. Just do what you need to, Lillian. Are you going to tell them you're leaving? Sarah and Abby? No. I don't think they need to know what I do anymore. Sarah might see that as you abandoning her and try to counter Sue. Hit her with the adultery charge. I don't have to stay to see it happen, do I? No. I have enough reason to move out now? You do. Who do you want to leave your things to in your will? Liam shrugged. I don't care, Lillian. Pick someone or something that'll upset Sarah and Abby. Maybe a donation to a political party they hate. Just make it solid. Lillian laughed. That would definitely upset them. Do it then. All right, I need to start working on this. I'll meet you at your house at five. Yeah, I'll be there. Sarah sat at her desk and yawned again. Last night had been wild, staying up late with the young man she had started seeing. She thought about why being with Robert felt better than being with Liam. It wasn't because Robert was more skilled. He wasn't. It was because it was new, adventurous, and fun, just as her daughter Abby had said it would be. Sarah was happy with her choice to spend the week with Robert. It felt exciting, almost like being on her honeymoon again. They decided to be careful at work, not wanting anyone to find out about their relationship. Abby had grown into someone with strong beliefs. Sarah was proud of her. Abby had shared these beliefs, leading Sarah to this new adventure with Robert. She felt free to live her life the way she wanted. Liam would just have to accept the new Sarah. Sarah picked up her phone and read Abby's messages again. Abby, hey mom, hope you're having fun. Just talk to dad. It went as expected. He hung up on me like I thought he would. He's angry and whining. Don't be shocked if he's gone for a few days. He'll come back. He has nowhere else to go. Enjoy your time. Love you. Abby, tried calling dad a few times this morning. I think he turned his phone off. No big deal. He needs time to handle this change. Don't worry if you can't reach him. Focus on what you want to do. BTW, I didn't leave any messages. Love you. Sarah frowned at the second message. Liam never turned off his phone. He needed it for work. She knew he wouldn't reply to her messages. What could he say? That he was unhappy with her? So what? That was his problem, not hers. She decided to stay with Robert for the week and ended on Sunday. She and Liam had been together for 19 years. She didn't want to lose him. She loved him. But as Abby said, he needed to change his ways. Even if he didn't, she would stay with him. Liam was a great husband and father. She knew she wouldn't find another man like him, so she would keep him. She wouldn't stop seeing other men when she felt like it, but she wasn't leaving Liam. She missed him these past three weeks. She missed his smile, his laugh, his voice, his touch. But she felt she had to do this. Sarah needed to let go emotionally to go on this trip. Abby was right about that too. That girl was very clever. Sarah yawned and smiled. Thinking about Robert, she couldn't help but chuckle to herself. That evening, Liam met Lillian and her investigator at his house. The investigator set up small wireless cameras and microphones around the house in less than an hour. They hid the recording device in the garage with a special fast router. Everything was ready. The investigator would park down the street and collect all the videos and sounds each day. It would only take about 10 minutes to download the data each time. Liam and Lillian went to a quiet restaurant for dinner. Liam still didn't feel like eating much. What are you going to do tonight, Liam? Lillian asked. I'll go back to my hotel, Liam said. 
Maybe I'll drink some wine or something. Who knows when I'll get another chance. Do you think you and Sarah can get through this? Lillian asked. No, Lillian. We can't. I can't accept the life she wants, and I won't live the way she wants me to either. I might have been able to forgive one party given some time, but this? Never. What about Abby? You're angry at her too. You want to remove her from your family legally. Is that truly what you want? I don't have proof, just her words. But I believe she pushed Sarah down this path. Sarah wouldn't do this on her own. Abby, I can't believe the things Abby is saying. I think she's leading this. So, yes, if this is how she thinks of me, then she is no longer my daughter. I don't like her anymore, and I will no longer support her. What will you do? Lillian asked. I have money taken out of my paycheck each week for Abby's account. It's for her spending, food, gas, whatever. It's a good amount to keep her comfortable. I'm stopping it tomorrow when I change my direct deposit with HR. Abby can get a job like everyone else, or Sarah can pay for her. I won't support someone ruining my life. You can also sue Abby for causing emotional damage. If we get evidence from the cameras, you could win. Yeah? And what would I get? A judgment against her? She has nothing. Yes, a judgment. That means she can't buy anything expensive, like cars or houses. She can't get credit cards or loans, even for school. It will follow her unless she pays or you withdraw the case. You can sue her in this state even if she doesn't live here. Okay, if you find enough evidence, go ahead. Let her learn that actions have costs. I'm worried about you, Liam. Why? About where you're going and what you'll be doing. I'm concerned. Well, I've already committed. I don't break my promises, Lillian. The company is counting on me, unlike my old family. That has to matter, right? Yes, I think so. Just don't do anything foolish and get hurt, okay? I couldn't bear to lose you, Liam. You've been my best friend for almost 20 years. Liam smiled, remembering their college days. I'll be back to see you, if for no other reason. Maybe we'll go dancing or something. Ha ha! You've owed me a dance for two decades. Maybe I should collect before you leave. No, that might be bad luck. Wait until I come back and I promise we'll dance. I'll hold you to that, Liam. Liam chuckled. One more thing, Liam. What will you do with your extra clothing? Are you putting it in storage? I guess so. I haven't thought about it yet. Keep it at my house. I have plenty of room. Really? Great. That will save me some worry and guarantee I'll see you again. Lillian laughed. How so? I'll probably need new clothes by the time I get back. Lillian laughed again. Don't bet on that, Liam. I might be wearing them while you're gone. What? Are you serious? You must be joking. Maybe I'll send you a picture. Liam laughed out loud. I'll be waiting for that picture. You'll use your usual email? For now. I made a new one just for us. He gave her the new email info. Why a second account? The old one is for general use and my company. My usual email might get hacked. We'll use the new one for private messages. Okay, that's smart. Now where do you want Sarah served the divorce papers? At work. Embarrass her. Are you sure? Yes. Turn their world to ashes. All of them. Liam didn't get as drunk as he told Lillian he would. He had just enough to numb his heartache and get a good night's sleep. In the morning, he checked his phone and saw he missed a couple of calls from Abby, but she didn't leave any voicemails. There was one text from her. Abby, you are not answering your phone, Dad. Stop acting like a child and accept your life has changed. You're only hurting yourself, and I don't want you to get hurt more than you have to. This change will hurt, but it has to. Please, Dad, accept what's happening with you and Mom. Talk to me. I can help you get through this. I helped Mom, and I can help you. I want to help you. Talk to me. Liam frowned at Abby's words. She didn't want to see him hurt? Really? She had helped her mother change? Now he knew who was behind Sarah's change. He left his phone on vibrate and took a shower. After that, he forwarded Abby's text to Lillian, and then went down for a full breakfast. From the hotel, he went to work and stopped in the HR office. He changed what he needed to change, though he had to sit through many questions from Nancy Baker, the head of HR. He finally lost his patience and told her his decisions were private. Nancy was shocked and stopped asking questions. However, she did tell Liam that this week's payment had already gone to his daughter, but it would be the last. Abby's health and life insurance would continue until the end of the month, and then it would stop.
His paycheck for the current week would also go to his old bank account. The next one would go to his new account. She handed him a sticky note showing his pay for the month. Before leaving, Liam looked at Nancy. I'm sorry, Nancy, for snapping at you. My wife and I are splitting up. It's not because of this job. She found someone else and my daughter supports her. My ex can start paying for my daughter's expenses. It's no excuse, but I'm sorry. Nancy stood up and gave Liam a strong hug. Oh my God, Liam, I'm so sorry, especially now. If you need anything, just tell me. Understand? You know how to reach me. Thank you, Nancy. Do I need to ask you to... I won't say a word except to Mr. Abernathy, and he'll need a very good reason for asking, okay? Liam nodded and smiled. Thank you. I'll be back Friday afternoon. Will you be at the briefing? I will. You know it's casual clothing for you, right? That's what I was going to wear anyway. Everything else is stored. Do you have a good lawyer looking out for you while you're gone? I do. The best I know. I've known her for nearly 20 years. I trust her completely. She will reach out to you because I gave her power of attorney. She can stand in for me in all matters. Good. I'll see you Friday. She hugged him again, and he left. Next, he went to see Lillian. She had everything ready for him to sign. An hour later, he left with a promise from Lillian that she would spend Friday evening with him until he was ready for bed. After that, he bought a new phone. His old phone wouldn't work where he was going, but he kept the same number. Why not? He heard from Abby twice more that day via text. Both texts were like the first, so he just forwarded them to Lillian. He had no plans to respond to Abby or Sarah for now. Maybe next Monday. Surprisingly, the week went by quickly for Liam. The briefing went by fast, too. It was a big project his company was betting on, and Liam felt proud that Mr. Abernathy trusted him with it. Still, he didn't see how they could finish in ten months. Fourteen months was more realistic, and he said so. Everyone at the meeting stressed that fourteen months was the longest time they had to complete the project. So Liam just nodded. What else could he do? His phone buzzed five times during the meeting. He guessed it wasn't Lillian. She had her special ringtone, so it must be Abby or Sarah. He didn't care. Later, while with Lillian, he checked his phone and showed her the messages. Sarah. You can have some small courtesy since you still live in the house. I'm telling you that I am bringing Robert home with me on Sunday. He will spend the night with me. Change the sheets if you haven't done so. I want you to meet him. He has a right to know who he is sharing me with, even briefly. I hope you've moved past your anger and will behave. I will evict you if you don't. You don't need to answer this. I don't want to hear from you before Sunday. Be there or you will regret it, Liam. I'm not in the mood for any nonsense. Is she crazy? What is she trying to do? Lillian gasped. I don't know, Lillian, but she will lose everything. You can bet on that, Liam. Send me that text. He did. The other texts were from Abby. Abby. Dad, you need to stop acting like this. It's getting boring. Do what Mom tells you and get over yourself. You are lucky she still wants to stay married to you, and I wonder why. You are not acting like a loving husband. Answer your phone when I call you. Abby, enough of this, Dad. Want to pout? Go ahead. You're on your own now. I tried. It's all up to you now. Liam sent those messages to Lillian, too. When will you tell them, Liam? Soon, I think. Sarah is bringing her new guy home on Sunday, so you'll have audio and video for then. That should help, right? Sounds good. Call me to update and call before you serve her. I might be traveling when you file, but I can contact you from anywhere. Here's something for you. Liam handed her a sheet of paper. I'll pay extra for your server to read this out loud when they serve them. Try to catch them in a public place, like the break room or HR office. Yeah, I prefer the HR office. Lillian read the sheet and laughed. No, Liam, we'll do this for free. Saturday morning found Liam at the airport at 4.30 a.m., Security was a hassle, and Liam worried about his packed pistol making it to Georgia. The flight was smooth, and he slept through much of it. On the ground, two people in uniforms met him. One was a big, muscular guy with small eyes and a small mouth. The other was a woman, standing very straight with her hair pulled tight. She had a stern and plain face, but her eyes were dark, almost black and very sharp. Liam thought she might be Native American, but he wasn't sure and didn't know much about Native Americans. The woman walked over with the big guy right behind her. Mr. Robertson? Liam Robertson? Liam shook her hand. She had a strong grip. Yes, you are. I am Captain Maggie Dumbarton. 
This big guy is Sergeant Peter Elliott. We're here to take you to your training site. You have luggage? I do. You brought a pistol? Yes, I hope it made it. I really like that pistol. Captain Dumbarton didn't comment. She just started walking toward the baggage area. The sergeant whispered to Liam, You'll get used to her. She's always stiff at first, but is a great officer. Call me Pete when we're alone. It's cool. Liam and Pete walked fast, but couldn't catch up to her without running. And Liam wasn't in the mood to run. All Liam's bags made the trip, with the suitcase containing the pistol sealed with tape. Liam hoped the pistol was still inside. So, Captain, what's the plan? I understand my training starts today. She looked back at him, then faced forward again. Yes, Mr. Robertson. It will take about 45 minutes to get to the base. Once there, we'll settle you into your quarters. After that, we'll go to the firing range where you'll show me how much you love your pistol. We'll take it easy today. You'll fire 300 rounds and then clean it. Next, you'll learn about the M4 rifle and fire another 300 rounds and then clean it. Once you've done that to my satisfaction, we'll go to the mess hall for dinner. You'll meet your team there. Her voice was surprisingly pleasant, though a bit clipped. Ah, well, sounds fun. I was worried I'd have to run miles a day or something. She gave him another odd look like he was an idiot or something. Do you want to run 12 miles a day? That can be arranged. Uh, no, thank you. I don't like running. I see, she said in an even tone. No running then, and no driving. Oh boy, Liam muttered. The sergeant snickered behind him. The drive was long and boring. Neither the captain nor the sergeant talked much. Liam, alone in the back of the Humvee, fell asleep. The quarters were better than he imagined. He had a sleeping area, a small sitting area, and a private bath with a small shower. No TV or radio in the room. He got a password for internet access, but was warned not to watch inappropriate content on the military network. He frowned at that and shook his head. The captain stood nearby as he opened his suitcase. You've brought too much baggage, she said. Why do you say that? I was told I could bring 150 pounds. Do you have 150 pounds with you? Uh, no. It totaled 135 pounds, she tisked. You need no more than 66 pounds. Maybe I should check what you brought. Yeah, no, thanks though. I'm not comfortable with strangers going through my things. I have what I think I need. I'm under the weight limit. Why do you care? Who will carry all this for you? I guess I will, judging by your question. Can you carry 135 pounds for long stretches? I don't know. What's a long stretch? 40, maybe 50 yards. In how much time? 30 seconds. Yup. Not even with a taxi. You're joking, right? No. Well, that sucks. At that moment, his phone rang. He fished it out of his pocket and accidentally hit the speaker icon. Lillian's voice came through quickly. Liam, Lillian, listen. Sarah came back to the house with her new boyfriend a day early, three hours ago. My friend was on the block checking the system to make sure it was ready for tomorrow. He saw everything live as it downloaded. They went straight to the bedroom and Sarah went crazy when she saw all of your stuff was gone. She and her new boyfriend didn't waste any time. They have been doing it all over the house. She is talking to Abby now and plans to call you soon. Sarah is angry you left and wants her new boyfriend with her when she calls you. She wants you to hear it. Uh... Hold on, Lillian. You're on speaker and I'm not alone. Oh. Oops. Why didn't you say something? Liam's face turned bright red as the captain stared at him. He felt so hot he thought his face might melt. He fumbled with the phone and the captain took it, turning off the speaker. Thank you. He muttered, deeply embarrassed. Uh, Lillian, do you have enough video and audio to show she's cheating? The captain turned away, but she could still hear the other side. Yes, Liam. I'm sorry. Are you okay? Yeah, it's fine, Lillian. Don't worry about it. Do you have enough to show she's cheating? Oh, yeah, more than enough. My guy also got her new boyfriend's license plate, so we have all his info, too. I will file the papers as soon as the courthouse opens Monday morning. Sarah and this Lindstrom guy will both be served, hopefully at the same time around 10.30 Monday morning. The company, too. It seems Lindstrom works for Sarah, so I'm going after them. Okay, great. What about Abby? Yeah, sorry, Liam. Sarah had her phone on speaker. We have Abby saying that all of this was her idea. It seems the whole thing with you and Sarah is based on a school project she is working on with some students. Abby was complaining loudly that you were not cooperating. 
She thinks she will fail because of it and is very upset. All right, have her served too. I will pay for the airfare and anything else needed. Can we sue that school? I don't know. I will have to find someone in California to ask, but Liam, it is California. Things are messy there. Well, try. This school has its students tearing their parents' marriages apart for a project. That's wrong. Go after them, Lillian. Make them pay. I will try, Liam. Listen, this is going to be hard, but you need to answer when Sarah calls you. You need to record the call. Do you know how to do that? Uh, no, Lillian. I have no idea how to do that. Why do I have to hear it? Pain and emotional distress, Liam. It's part of the process. Are you serious? He hissed. I have to listen to some guy with my wife to prove I'm upset? That's ridiculous. I'll send you the voicemail if she leaves one. That's as far as I'm going. I've had enough, Lillian. Just end it for me. All right. I'm sorry, Liam. Don't hate me, okay? That will never happen, Lillian. Never. I have to go. I need to be off doing something. What? Bye! Liam hung up, his face still red. I'm sorry about that, Captain. There is no need to apologize, Mr. Robertson. Things happen to all of us. We just didn't know you were dealing with this emotional stuff. That's because I didn't tell anyone, Captain. I don't mind telling you, though, if you need to know. I think I do, Mr. Robertson. I am in charge of your security for the next 10 to 14 months. I think it's important I know what's going on with you. Do you understand? Yeah, I do. Really? You're following me around for a year or so? I am, along with the team you will meet later. Liam handed her his phone after giving her the same rundown he had given Lillian. Sarah is my wife and Abby is my daughter. Read the texts to catch up. Well, the captain whispered, this is... Wow, it's all a school project for your daughter? She is behind this? Yes, it seems so. I see. This is going to take a lot of your time. No. That caller? Lillian? She is my attorney. I've known her since my first day of college. Lillian is my best friend. She has my power of attorney and will handle everything. My priority is finishing this project on time. That's all. I just need to send an email to my daughter tonight and one on Tuesday to my wife. Then I am out of the picture. What is your plan with your daughter? I have legally disowned her and cut off her financial support. She is her mother's problem now. Well, Mr. Robertson, I have misjudged you. You are tough, aren't you? I am impressed. I don't see what other choice I had. Like you said, I don't have time for this mess. They made their choices and they can live with them. Are we ready to go shoot something? I need it. Captain Dumbarton laughed. I bet you are, Mr. Robertson. Yeah. Enough of that Mr. Robertson stuff. I am Liam, unless we're in some formal setting. Call me anything but Liam and I will ignore you, okay? Sorry, I am feeling cranky. I understand, Liam. Better? I am Maggie in private. Call me Maggie any other time and I will ignore you. Fair enough? Liam laughed. Sure. Fair is fair. Let's go shoot. The firing range wasn't anything special. It was just an open area with stationary paper targets. Liam was briefed on the range and safety rules by Sergeant Elliot. He was given ear protection and boxes with 300 bullets. Captain Dumbarton explained what they would be doing. This afternoon, you will shoot your gun so we can see how good you are. We will stop you at times to fix any bad habits, then let you continue. Your target is at seven yards. Have you practiced with this pistol often? Yes, I find shooting relaxing. I go to my local range at least twice a month. I've shot about a thousand rounds with this pistol since I got it. The instructors at my range are very helpful, so I hope I do well. Very well. Load all of your magazines, but keep your pistol safe and unloaded until I say you can start. Begin now. Liam quickly loaded the four magazines and followed the captain's instructions. Once he began shooting, he got into his usual rhythm and wasn't interrupted. Very good, the captain said. You have been well trained. Your shots are very close together and exactly where you aimed. But I noticed you only shot one magazine into the center, or the heart. The rest were split between the face, throat, and lower body. Why is that? Liam shrugged. I was taught to aim for places that would end a fight quickly. It's just a habit now. Did you use the sights on your pistol? I couldn't tell. No, I learned to point aim. It's like the barrel is my finger pointing at my target. Interesting and practical. You'll need to use the sights when we switch to the M4, but point aim is good for handguns. Let's move to the 15-yard target. 
Liam repeated the steps and noticed his shots were a bit more spread out at 15 yards, but still, all his shots hit the target. Now let's try 25 yards, the captain said. 25 yards was tough for Liam. He hadn't practiced at that distance, so his shots weren't as good. They stayed there until he used up all the ammo. This was expected. You brought a 1911.45 ACP pistol, which isn't known for long-range shooting. You also haven't practiced aiming for this distance. We'll work on that. For now, clean your pistol as quickly and thoroughly as you can. Liam cleaned his pistol at his usual pace, not thinking he was being timed. When he was done, he turned to show the captain, only to be hit with a cloud of sand from Sergeant Elliot. What the heck? Why did you do that? Now I have to clean it again. Exactly, Mr. Robertson. Dust and sand will be a big problem where you're going. Learn to deal with it. Liam was frustrated, muttering, You sound like the women in my life. Captain Dumbarton laughed. I am one of the women in your life starting this morning. Clean that pistol quickly, please. You can go faster, can't you? Sergeant Elliot got him two more times. The third time, Liam covered the pistol with his free hand. The M4 was fun to shoot but hard to clean, and Sergeant Peters kept bothering him. Liam was fuming by the time he was done. It didn't help that Captain Dumbarton wasn't pleased with how long it took him to clean the weapons. He was in a bad mood when they went to the mess hall for dinner. I don't usually eat in the mess as I'm an officer. This platoon is special because we exist just for you. There are 44 soldiers in it split into five squads. Normally a lieutenant would lead a platoon, but I'm tasked with this mission. Captain Dumbarton introduced Liam to all the platoon members. He tried to remember their names, but there were too many. The food was terrible. Liam managed to eat it with a smile, but it was bad. He wondered if he'd be eating like this for the next year. Sarah didn't call him that day. Back in his quarters, he wrote an email to Abby. He didn't know how often she checked this email account, but it didn't matter to him. She would see it, or she wouldn't. He didn't bother with a greeting. This is the last time you will hear from me. I don't need to tell you what I've done. But I'm not like you or my unfaithful wife. I have legally disinherited and disowned you. It's already done. You are no longer my daughter, my only child, or my heir. You put an end to that. I'm done with you. You will receive the last money from me this week. Also, you and your mother are no longer on my company insurance plans. At the end of the month, you will lose your health and life insurance. Not my problem anymore. Get a job and learn what life is truly like. I don't know why you did what you did to us, especially to me. I can only hope you're happy with yourself. If this is what you wanted, then fine. Otherwise, everything you've done means nothing. I'm disgusted that I helped bring someone like you into this world. It's obvious I'm divorcing your mother. That's already settled. Don't call me. Don't text me. Don't email me. Don't look for me. You won't find me. You and your mother made your choices. I've made mine. Liam wasn't happy with what he wrote, but he was tired. He thought, it's good enough. He sent the email and copied Lillian. He didn't hear anything from Abby. Sarah, however, was different. Her first text came late on Sunday afternoon. Sarah, where are you? I told you to come back home today. Robert is waiting to meet you. Come home now or I'll contact an attorney. Don't test me, Liam. Come home now. Then, early Monday afternoon, Sarah, are you out of your mind? You're divorcing me for cheating? Is this some cruel joke? Why did you embarrass me at work? Why didn't you call or come home? There's no need for a divorce, Liam. You can't judge me. I can do what I want. Stop these silly lawsuits against Robert and my company. Stop this nonsense now and come home. Today. Right now. An hour later. Sarah. Have you lost your mind? You disowned our daughter? What is wrong with you? Is this some sad attempt to get me back? It won't work, Liam. Stop what you're doing. This isn't like you. Late Monday afternoon. Sarah. I hope you're happy, you jerk. I got fired today and so did Robert. Why did you go after him? He did nothing wrong. I'll make you pay for this, you jerk. I hate you. Hours later, Sarah. Come home, Liam, please. We can work this out. Let me explain. I don't want to lose you. Come back to me. Please. You know I love you. This is all a big misunderstanding. Come home to me. Liam showed the texts to Captain Dumbarton to keep her informed. He then forwarded all of them to Lillian. He didn't talk with her until that evening, though. Hey, Lillian, busy day, huh? Lillian laughed. You have no idea, Liam. 
We still have the cameras at your old house, so it's been a real show. Sarah keeps switching between yelling and crying. She doesn't know which makes her feel better. Her boyfriend is with her. All he seems to care about is being with her. What a loser that guy is. What about Abby? Did she see my email? What's going on with her? Well, I also filed the lawsuit against her. One of my people is already there. Abby should get served by the morning, probably in class. The school will get served first, and they know it's coming. Your lawsuit against the school won't go far, but the bad publicity will hurt them. Abby and her group will lose any scholarships they have, that's already decided. She's on a full ride, so she'll have to leave school unless she can pay for it. She can't. She won't get any grants or loans because of your lawsuit. That's what you wanted, right? Yes, that works. You okay, Liam? Yeah, I guess. They're keeping me really busy here, so I don't have time to think about everything. Tomorrow will be different. I'll feel it all then. Lillian, I'll tell Sarah tomorrow that she needs to go through you for everything. Are you ready for that? Lillian laughed. Of course. Send her my way and tell her to bring her attorney. Will do, Lillian. Thanks for everything. I wouldn't have anyone if not for you. Hey, Liam, you know I care about you, right? Maybe not the marrying kind of love, but I do care deeply. Maybe when you get back, you can make a case for the marrying kind. Either way, I'll always be here for you. Never doubt that. I won't. Hey, maybe you can take a vacation and join me for a couple of weeks. What do you think? Lillian laughed again. No way, cowboy. My idea of a vacation is the beach. Arrange that and you have a deal. Tuesday morning, Liam was packed and ready to go. He and the platoon were taking a military flight out of Georgia. Shortly before he left, he sent this text to Sarah and Lillian. Liam. You need an attorney, Sarah. Get one. Make an appointment to see Lillian and bring your attorney with you. Bring your daughter, too. She should be with you by then. Lillian has my full power to stand in for me on all personal matters. Ignore her at your own risk. I'm leaving the country today. I won't be back for a long time. Anything Lillian says or does on my behalf is with my full approval. You and I are now officially separated, and we are waiting for the divorce to be finalized. I am not responsible for your living expenses or support. Losing your job is your problem, not mine. You are on your own. I thought about saying I wished things had turned out differently, but you and your daughter made that impossible. You reap what you sow. Abby Robertson was trying to get comfortable in her seat with her classmates. She yawned, hoping she could stay awake through the class. She hadn't slept since getting that email from her father. Her mother wasn't any help either, none at all. Abby was very angry at her father. What right did he have to cut her off like that? Was that even legal? She didn't know or care. She would fight it. He had no right to blame her for his problems. She would show him. Just as her professor started the lecture, two people entered the room. One was the dean of her school. The other was a young woman dressed casually. They walked up to her professor who listened for a few moments and then said, Class today is canceled. Will the following students come forward, please? The professor called out Abby's name and those of her project group. Most of the class left quickly. Some stayed behind, recording everything with their cell phones. Abby and her friends stood before the professor, the dean and the woman, who stepped forward. Abby Robertson, please step forward and face me. Abby frowned but ignored the woman. Abby Robertson, step forward and face me, the woman repeated. The dean looked at Abby, frowning. Step forward, Miss Robertson. Do it now, the dean ordered. Abby did as she was told. Her knees felt weak. The young woman held out an envelope to Abby, who reluctantly took it. Abby Robertson, you have been served. What you have is a court order stating that you have been disowned and disinherited by Liam Carl Robertson, your former father. You are no longer recognized as his child or heir. Do you understand what is in your hand? I... I don't... What is happening? Abby stammered. I need a yes or no answer from you, Miss Robertson. Do you understand what you are holding in your hand? I... Yes. I understand. But... Very good, the young woman said and held out a second envelope to Abby. Abby didn't want to touch this one. She didn't know what it was, but she didn't want any part of it. Her eyes wide, she looked at the dean, who frowned at her in disgust. He pointed at the envelope the woman was holding and flicked his hand. The meaning was obvious. Abby, hand shaking, took the second envelope. You have been served, the young woman said clearly. 
This is a notice that you are being sued for alienation of affection. You are being blamed for the end of the marriage between Liam Carl Robertson and Sarah Ann Robertson. Do you understand what you have been given? Tears flowed down Abby's face and she was shaking. She thought she might throw up. Answer the woman, Miss Robertson. Do you understand or not? The dean snarled. I... I do. Abby stuttered. One by one... The other students in the project group were called forward and served their own summons. One of the group even vomited. It was all recorded, including the dean telling the group that their scholarships were revoked. This meant they were no longer students at that school. He told them to get legal help as soon as possible, then left with the professor following him. The young woman stayed with Abby and her friends. Her eyes were cold as she spoke to them. Liam Carl Robertson wanted to make sure you all understand that actions have consequences. You will all face the consequences of your behavior and your attack on his marriage and on him. Personally, I think each of you deserves to be punished for what you did to that man. You are pathetic excuses for human beings. She spun on her heel and left the classroom, followed by her associate, who was also recording the proceedings. The video had been sent to Liam. He watched it with Captain Dumbarton. Liam had tears in his eyes. He hated having to do that. He hated it. But... Reap what you sow. The captain smiled, showing a bit of admiration and respect after watching the video. Three weeks later, Lillian was waiting in her office meeting room for Sarah to arrive with her lawyer. Sarah had hired Charles Baker, of all people. Lillian had faced Charlie a dozen times before and beaten him every time. She was looking forward to doing it again. Lillian's assistant brought the group into the room. Sarah and Abby both looked worried and maybe even scared. Good. Charlie, of course, acted like his usual arrogant self. What an idiot. Let's begin. Does anyone need coffee or water before we start? Lillian asked. Charlie, of course, asked for coffee. He always did. Abby asked for water. Sarah didn't say anything to Lillian. Very well, Lillian said as she handed a single sheet of paper to each of the three sitting at the table. Be aware that this meeting is being recorded. This is a copy of Liam Robertson's power of attorney making me his sole representative for his affairs while he is not here. Please take a moment to review it. The assistant returned with the drinks as Lillian waited. Charlie skimmed the document while Sarah and Abby read it carefully. Lillian then handed a folder to Charlie. You need to review this with your client, Charlie. It has video, audio, and text messages, plus sworn statements about your client's cheating during the divorce. It won't take long to see that Sarah Robertson chose to end her marriage in the worst way possible. Lillian, Sarah tried to speak. You will call me Miss Prescott, Mrs. Robertson. Speak through your lawyer, Lillian replied coldly. Lillian handed Charlie another thick folder. This has copies of sworn video and written statements from students involved in Abby Robertson's fake school project. Abby and her mother worked together to ruin Liam Robertson's marriage and attack him personally. All four students admitted what they did and will testify for Liam. Charlie, are you also representing Abby Robertson in her attempt to cancel Liam's dissolution of issue? Uh, yes. Yes, I am. Good luck with that, Lillian sneered. Save everyone the trouble and drop it after you review this. We'll see, Lillian. Right now we need to discuss your client supporting Mrs. Robertson until the trial. She is jobless and in a tough spot. A phone rang and Lillian pressed a key on her laptop. The large TV behind her showed Liam's image, though it was a bit fuzzy. Liam sat in view of the camera with armed soldiers around him. A woman with a hand on his shoulder stood nearby. Liam, welcome. Sorry for waking you. Thank you for joining us. That's fine, Lillian. Why am I needed? To confirm, Liam. First, do you still plan to continue the divorce as you wanted? Lillian asked. Yes, as planned. I won't give her anything. She can dig through trash for all I care. Just end this, Lillian. Get her out of my life for good. I will. Next, do you plan to continue with the lawsuits for alienation of affection? Yes, all of them, every single one. No mercy, Lillian. Make them pay for what they did. Every one of them, Liam said, staring at Abby coldly. She turned pale and almost left her seat, but her mother held her in place. I will, Liam. Finally, have you reconsidered the dissolution of issue against Abby Robertson? No, that person doesn't exist to me. Are we done, Lillian? 
I have a busy day. Do what we discussed. You have my full support. Thank you, Liam. Stay safe. Liam grinned. Yeah, he said, nodding at the armed captain beside him. I don't have much choice with her following me everywhere. Gotta love her, though. She's taking good care of me. Liam leaned back, revealing a pistol in a shoulder holster. Sarah gasped. Liam, where are you? What are you doing? Liam frowned and ended the call. Sarah turned to Lillian. Where is he? Lillian, where is my husband? Tell me, I have a right to know. No, you don't, Mrs. Robertson, by Liam Robertson's orders. You will call me Miss Prescott. You are legally separated, not in his will, and have no rights concerning my client. I may share some information as I decide, but don't talk to me about rights after what you did to that man. Sarah's tears streamed down her face. Abby was crying too, shocked at her father's anger. Lillian, please. He's in danger, right? What is he doing? Where is he? Bring him back, Lillian. I love him. Please. Lillian was furious. She wanted to shake Sarah, but kept her cool. Sarah's lawyer said nothing, just sipped his coffee. You love him? Lillian said angrily. That's a lie. Lillian, Charlie cut in. This is bad enough, don't you think? What harm is there in my client knowing where her husband is? Is that important to the court proceedings? You have full control to act for him, so what does it really matter? Lillian glared at Sarah and Abby, then nodded. You're right, Charlie. For once, fine. Lillian sat at the table. Liam was offered to lead a project overseas. It wasn't really an offer. He had to accept or find another job. He wanted to talk to his loving wife before deciding. The day he heard about the job, he came home to discuss it. That's when you told him you were going on a date with Robert Lindstrom. Liam couldn't talk about anything except you leaving him for your lover. You turned your back on your husband and your marriage that night. I don't care what excuses you have. You threw Liam away. He decided there was no reason to refuse the job anymore, so he took it that evening just before talking to Abby. He wanted to tell his daughter what he was doing, but she was too busy pushing him away. She didn't care about what he was going through. She just threw him out of her life without feeling sorry. He was set to leave the following Saturday. He had just enough time to sort things out. You, Mrs. Robertson, did not come back to the house and told him not to bother you while you were spending time with your lover for the rest of the week. So, he didn't bother you. He grieved the loss of his family and took care of his tasks. He left early Saturday morning. He spent three days getting weapons training at Fort Benning in Georgia. Then he flew to Iraq on military planes. He now goes between Iraq and Afghanistan and will do this for at least a year. The woman you saw next to him is the commander of his personal security team. Her job is to keep Liam safe, now you know. He is where he is because he had no reason to stay. He has no wife, no daughter, no family because of you two. Don't talk to me about rights. You both disgust me. The room fell silent except for Sarah's and Abby's crying. Charlie seemed bored. All right, then. As for the divorce, my client wants... No, she gets nothing. No alimony, no support. She can either buy out my client's share of the house or sell the house. We know she can afford to buy him out. What? How did... Please, Charlie. My client managed all the finances. He had access to her bank accounts with her permission. She never took that permission away. Irrelevant, Lillian. She is unemployed. Not my client's fault. It was her bad choices and behavior that got her fired, not Liam's. He won't be punished because your client acted that way. Lillian, there's no need. Spare me, Charlie. She is what she is. My client still has access to the house, so I do too. I had it appraised while removing the cameras Liam had installed. Lillian pushed copies of the appraisal across the table. You know my client will get at least 65% of the house in an adultery case. Maybe more since his money paid the mortgage. I have the payment history, all from his account. Your client, even when working, never made one payment. Charlie glanced at the appraisal, shaking his head. Fine, Lillian, but there's also a countersuit. Abby Robertson wants your client to pay the rest of her education costs, including room, board, and an allowance. Lillian laughed. No, and absolutely no. Abby Robertson is no longer his responsibility. She won't survive my client's suit against her. She gets nothing but our disdain and should be grateful for that. Lillian. Forget it, Charlie. Her four friends have confessed everything. They gave us their recordings and notes on this act. Everything was handed over without any promise of relief in the lawsuits. 
They promise to testify against his soon-to-be ex-wife and Abby. There's no doubt Abby started this and Sarah helped plan it. You're just wasting your client's time and money. They get nothing. Why are we here? What's the point if you're going to be this stubborn? Two reasons. First, to give you our evidence. Second, so your clients see Liam's determination. They saw him. They heard him. They have no doubts now, right? Lillian ignored Sarah and Abby, focusing on Charlie. He glanced at his clients until Sarah spoke. I will fight the divorce. I don't care what evidence you have. I will demand counseling. I can do that. Lillian laughed harshly. Go ahead. Get your counseling order. You will attend one session with me. Explain it, Charlie. Lillian is right. She can represent your husband in every way, including court-ordered counseling. She speaks for him. That's not fair. I want to talk to my husband. Explain. You had your chance, Mrs. Robertson, and you ignored it. So did your daughter. Face your actions. Accept what Liam has offered and move on. Maybe he will change his mind later. Unlikely, but possible. Lillian, these are my clients. You shouldn't. Then you tell them, Charlie. I'm being a bit generous because of my past friendship with your clients. But push me, and I will be ruthless. I despise them for what they did to my friend. So go on, Charlie. Push me. I will destroy them for life. I... Uh, I see, Lillian. Let me take some time to look over what you gave me and talk to my clients. You have until the end of Friday. 5 p.m., not one second later, Charlie. That's crazy. I'll make it simple for you. Watch the videos of Sarah with her friend. It will take no more than 10 minutes to see she doesn't stand a chance in the divorce. Spend a couple of hours looking at the evidence from her daughter's friends. You'll see that both Sarah and Abby are guilty. No doubt. Take an hour to listen to your clients plotting against Liam Robertson. Spend 20 minutes looking over Sarah's financial papers. Again, no doubt. By this afternoon, you should know exactly where they stand, Charlie. You have my clients' demands. They are demands. You have until the end of Friday to give in. After that, I will take everything they have. They ruined my client's life on purpose. I will ruin theirs. Lillian, I've never seen you like this before. I advise you professional behavior. Laugh it off, Charlie. You know I filed in Judge Merkel's court. You know I used to work for her. She has already seen all of this, Charlie. She has already talked to Liam. Twice. She has even talked to Abby's friends and read their statements. You will get your turn, Charlie. It's only fair, right? I give it seven minutes to present your whole case and then you're sunk. I'll even bet you, Charlie, Sarah Robertson won't be allowed to keep Liam's last name after the divorce. Make sure she has her birth certificate at the trial because she will be leaving that courtroom with her maiden name again. What? That's crazy. The court can't order that. So, bet me. Coffee for a week. Loser pays. I... No, of course not. You're being ridiculous, Lillian. Sure I am. You've never beaten me in court, Charlie. You've never even come close. This case, I'm going to beat you so badly that you'll never want to see a courtroom again. You might as well open a dry cleaners. Sarah and Abby were both watching the argument in front of them. They were horrified by Lillian's anger, and even more so that their lawyer was fidgeting in his chair and sweating. Sweating! They felt lost and knew it. Sarah interrupted. Enough, Lillian. Please, enough. Mr. Baker, thank you for your time. I no longer need your services. Please leave all of the documents with me. Send your final bill to my home address. I... This is crazy, Mrs. Robertson. She is bluffing. Mr. Baker, I've known this woman for nearly 20 years. She is not bluffing. Sarah glanced at her watch. I will not be paying you beyond 11 a.m. today. You should leave. Oh, and I will not be paying you to represent my daughter either. She can make her own arrangements if she wants to continue with her case. Mom, be quiet, Abby. Just be quiet. Charlie Baker huffed, then left the conference room. Sarah sat back in her seat, feeling defeated. Abby just looked scared. You two should leave, Lillian said in a flat voice. Get another lawyer if you want, but hurry. The judge won't give you more time. I know that already. Sarah shook her head. No, no more lawyers. I won't fight the divorce. What are Liam's demands? Do you have them listed? Sarah, you shouldn't be talking to me directly. I represent Liam, and only Liam. This meeting is still being recorded. I understand. I have no problem with that. What are his demands? What did he ask you to do? Lillian snorted. 
He asked me to burn you both to ashes. Sarah's body recoiled at that harsh sentence. Very well. How do you plan to do that? Are you serious that you want to continue with me? I am. I accept that I caused this break with my husband. I am fully responsible for it. He did nothing to deserve the way I treated him, shamed him. What is my punishment? Have you read the divorce papers? I did, yes. I don't remember all of it, though. I was shocked to receive them. I didn't think he would do this. I don't know why, but I believed he would agree to stay married with the changes I wanted. I don't know why I thought that. I should have known better. I knew he loved me. He loved me deeply. I know that. I thought he would accept. He had to accept. I should have known better. Yes, you should have. He is in danger, isn't he? He is. Constant danger. The people protecting him, though, they're really good at their job. He has a good chance to survive. Sarah's body shook with sobs. He was going to quit his job? Sarah sobbed. That's what he told me. That was his plan until he got home and you made your dumb statement to him. Abby, of course, was the final nail. She might have made a difference, but she didn't care about him either. I will pay off the house and give it to him. He doesn't want the house. He told me he would never set foot in that house again, not after you did that with that guy on Liam's bed. I will sell it then and give him all the money from it. That's a start. What else, Lillian? You will get no alimony from him and he will not pay for any maintenance for you or Abby. Definitely not for Abby. That means no insurances of any kind. Nothing. I accept that. What about you? I will pay your legal fees. Liam has already paid for what needed to be paid for. I am representing my friend for free. What does that mean? It means I am not taking one penny for helping my friend. That's none of your business. You can keep your car. He has no need of one where he is. Nothing is left in the house that he wants or needs, she said. What about the bank accounts? Sarah asked. He took half before he left. Haven't you checked your accounts? No, I haven't checked. I should... He didn't touch your personal account, only the joint checking and savings accounts. He also took half of the CDs you both had. Liam said the rest of the CDs are in the office safe. I'm sure they are if he said so. What else, Lillian? There has to be more. Oh, I have a lot of things I could take from you, Sarah, but I won't. My friend is in a bad place, in constant pain from what you two did to him. He wants to be rid of you, and I agree. The sooner the better. He needs that, at least. Come back tomorrow morning at ten. I'll have the papers ready for you to sign. Sell your house. The divorce won't be final until you do, so hurry. Also, spell your maiden name for me. Liam insists you won't keep his family name. I agree. You don't deserve it. Yes, of course. Haskell. I was born Sarah Ann Haskell. You will go back to that name after the divorce? Is that all? Yes, for me. Lillian, what about the lawsuit against Abby? It's not yours to handle. She is my daughter. No, Sarah. Abby is an adult who destroyed her family, your marriage, and her father. She will answer for herself or speak to the judge. I... I don't know what to say. It wasn't supposed to be like this. Well, it is, you fool. What did you expect? Did you think Liam would just give in to your childish ways? Have you no respect for him at all? I... Studies say that he... This shouldn't have happened. It wasn't supposed to go this way. Abby started crying. You idiot! Studies? You did this to your father because of some studies? Did you even check where they came from? Lillian, stop talking, Sarah. Just stop. What about the other students in your group, Abby? Did any of them try this with their parents? Abby nodded. Yes, she said softly. We tried, but the other parents didn't listen to us. Some even mocked us. It's my fault, Lillian, Sarah interrupted. I was curious when Abby called and told me about it. I wanted to try it. I don't know why. It just sounded right to me. I didn't want to lose Liam, but I wanted more in my life. Her idea struck a chord with me. I had never been unfaithful to Liam, not once in our marriage. I never thought about it until... I convinced myself I wasn't being unfaithful. I was just changing our marriage to fit what I wanted. I thought I was free, or at least that's what I told myself. Jesus, Lillian muttered. And you, Abby, did it ever occur to you to talk to Liam about this at the same time you told your mom? No. I knew he would never agree. So you didn't care how it would hurt him. 
I did. I knew it would hurt him, and I offered to help him get through it. Yes, I have your texts. That's what you call help? Convincing him to accept your mother's behavior? No, I wasn't... I didn't... Lillian glared at Abby, then turned her glare to Sarah. Is this supposed to be intelligence? This is what passes for intelligence today? Lillian. You two make me ashamed to be a woman. You make me sick. Tell me, Abby. You're supposed to be smart. How will you handle Liam's lawsuit? Are you going to fight it? I don't want it. I want it to go away. I want to win the lottery. It's not happening. How does it feel to want something you can't have? He has a million-dollar lawsuit against you. How will you handle it? Abby was crying hard. I don't have that kind of money. I can't... I can't make it go away. Please, make it go away. God damn it. You haven't once said you're sorry for what you did to Liam. Grow up. You brought this on yourself. I can't... Tough luck. Lillian, please. You're right. We should be punished. I agree. She has already lost her scholarships and her education. She can't get school loans or grants. I have another job lined up. It's not as good, but... Work with me. I can pay a settlement if it's not too much. Her school? I don't care about her schooling, Sarah. She wasted what she had. That's her problem. I won't let you pay her way through this. She has to answer for her own actions. Liam might... He will not! I speak for Liam. Me. You two settle this with me or take it to court. She has no chance in court. Okay, Lillian. How much? What will you settle for? For Abby? How much will calm your anger? Liam's anger! Lillian leaned back, glaring at Sarah. The other parents offered to settle at 100000 each. I might accept those offers, but not from Abby. Then what? Give me a number, Lillian. Give Abby a number. Lillian's jaw tightened as she thought. This is a one-time offer. Abby will either accept it now or take her chances in court. Understand? I do. I'm asking Abby. Uh, yes, I understand. $250,000. You'll need a full-time job, Abby, and you'll make payments from your paychecks. If your mother can pay for it, you can go to night school. But you need to work full-time and pay this money yourself. You'll also change your last name to your mother's maiden name. You don't deserve Liam's name. If you break this deal, I'll drag you to court for the full million dollars. Abby's eyes widened and her mouth dropped open. She stayed like that for a few seconds, then fainted and fell to the floor. Sarah rushed to her side. Lillian didn't even look over. After a few minutes, Sarah got Abby back into her chair and wiped her face with water from the bottle on the table. When Abby was awake, Lillian asked, Are you done with the drama? Anything else you want to do? Cry some more? I need an answer. Are you accepting or refusing, Abby? Sarah started to speak, but Lillian cut her off. No, only Abby talks. I, oh, I accept, Abby said, then started crying again. Lillian snorted. You have three weeks to find a full-time job. Show me proof of your job and your payments to the bank account I give you. Come with your mother tomorrow morning to sign your settlement. Now leave, you disgust me. Lillian stood and gathered the folders in front of her. Lillian, may I ask a question? Just a moment, please. What is it? Liam, can I write to him? An email? God, Sarah, what do you hope to get from this? Don't you think he has enough things to deal with? He doesn't care why you did what you did. It was too much. Leave him alone. Give it six or seven months, then talk to me about it. Just leave him be. It's not that, Lillian. I just want to know he's safe. That's all. Maybe just a short note now and then. Are you still seeing that loser? What? No, there's no one. Not since I was served. The day after, I think, no, he's gone. No one else. I promise. Shit, Lillian muttered. I didn't tell you this, understand? If you betray me, you're dead, understand? Sarah nodded, tears in her eyes. He still has his old personal email. I don't know how often he checks it, but it's there. Don't screw this up, she hissed. Sarah sobbed. I won't. I promise. Thank you. One thing, Sarah, don't let Abby reach out to him. Give that time. She hurt him more than you did. His only child, turning on him like that. I know. Thank you. Liam woke up in his dark room. There was a small nightlight, which helped. But it was still very dark. He looked over at Maggie, who was sleeping beside him. She was awake now, ready for any danger. She didn't say anything or move. He knew she was looking at him with her serious expression, which she called her resting face. It showed no emotion, 
It took him a while to get used to it, but now he liked it. It was calming for him. What woke you? She whispered. I don't know, he answered softly. Bad dream, maybe. Or gas. She smiled. He could tell because he saw a quick flash of her teeth. Just a flash. It was enough. Maggie could see better in the dark than Liam could. She could easily see his body, which was more fit than when he started this job. He had asked for help, and she taught him everything. He had a body like a 30-year-old now, even though he was almost 42. He was getting pretty good at his job, too. She watched him, but she didn't need to babysit him anymore. He was capable. She enjoyed his company. That was rare for her. Men came and went. None stayed with her long. It was that resting face of hers. Men found it unsettling. Liam did not. He liked it and said it was calming. She liked his intelligence, honesty, patience, and sense of humor. He made her laugh in a non-threatening way. He was brave. She liked that a lot. They had been together for a month before something unexpected happened. She had no plans for him because of what he was going through back home. He had no plans for her for the same reason. Yet, they were driving a patrol route in the middle of nowhere when one of the Humvee's tires blew out. At first, they thought it was an attack and reacted accordingly. But it wasn't an attack. Just a bad tire. And there was no spare tire on the vehicle. Maggie called for a tow truck, giving their location. They were told to wait two hours. Maggie went around to join Liam by the front tire. Maggie sat next to Liam when he made a Skype call to his lawyer's office, her hand resting on his shoulder the whole time. She saw his soon-to-be ex-wife and his daughter for the first time during that call. She couldn't understand why his ex-wife left him. Maggie didn't think they deserved Liam. People noticed her hand on his shoulder. Captain Dumbarton said it was just a way to show comfort to the folks back home. It was true, but it wasn't the whole story. The whole platoon knew about it within the hour. They heard her reason and nodded. They liked and respected Liam, and they thought the captain was good for him. That was enough for them, as long as they were careful. Back home, Liam got an email from his lawyer within two hours. Thanks, Liam. Sorry to wake you, but you made things easier. Sarah fired their lawyer and gave up on everything. She regrets what she did, but it's too late. I got a solid deal for you with Abby. Everyone else gave good offers, too. I'll send more details once everything is signed. Everything will be done by the end of the week. No court time needed. So are you with that tall woman? She's really gorgeous. Please say you are. Liam laughed, and so did Maggie. She thinks I'm gorgeous? Is she serious? Yep, Lillian always says what she means. You have a fan, Maggie. I'll make sure you meet her when we go back to the States. You do that? Of course, why wouldn't I? You think we'll still be together? Yes, I hope so. This isn't a rebound for me. I really want to be with you. Is that okay with you? Maggie was quiet for a few moments and then frowned. Strangely, it's not a problem. I've never had a long-term relationship. I never expected to. But I want this with you. I don't know why, but I do. You accept me as I am. That's unusual for me. We'll take it as far as we can. Is that okay? Liam chuckled. That's fine. I hope I don't disappoint you. Maggie snorted. You say that because of what Sarah did. She was foolish and never deserved you. She had no real love or honor. I am not her. You need to win my heart, but if you do, you'll have it for life. I am eager to see how you will do that. This led to a wild night, and Maggie was the one who finally called it a night. Liam couldn't remember a happier time in his life. It took Liam two weeks to reply to Lillian. Lillian first, no camels for me, thanks.